Will blockchain technology help align law firms, clients, and technology companies to transform the business of law? So I have been uh, a CIO now most of my adult life. Uh, in fact, uh, 26 years of a 35-year career um, has been in the legal industry. Most recently here at Baker and Hostetler, uh, I have been the CIO for 20 years. Um, so I have witnessed wave after wave of technology evolution. It's been exhilarating and exciting. And uh, I believe the next wave is upon us, and that wave is blockchain. The more you invest yourself in um, what blockchain is and what possibilities it enables, I think you come to believe that the world is going to be different as a result of blockchain. And we believe the legal world is going to be different on a whole bunch of levels, by the way. What has become commonplace in the blockchain arena is the establishment of various consortia as a way, as really a recognition that blockchain has transformative capabilities, but in order to embrace them in a way that has high impact on a given industry or sector, getting the right people around a table to explore, uh, imagine, and, and contemplate how these technologies can solve real world business problems. And in our case, we're here today to talk about how it might solve real world legal business problems specifically. That's our space. Um, this is data that comes from uh, Peer Monitor, uh, Thomson Reuters company. Um, that, uh, and I don't think anybody argues with this, that um, the, the somewhat harsh fiscal reality of, of law firms today is the fact that our market has been relatively flat in terms of demand, which has all sorts of, of implications and challenges. So I alluded to this earlier, we believe there's a better future that uh, can be largely enabled through blockchain technologies, an interoperable and secure global legal industry using blockchain technology. That's what we're here to begin to imagine and consider and, and then, once we leave here, set about the hard work of figuring out what that looks like and how that can take place. Uh, some important points about the, the very notion of a global legal blockchain consortium. Um, this consortium will be absolutely agnostic as it relates to software. Uh, the idea is not to uh, imagine new companies and new software, but to create an enabling layer to, to have the already really good and robust legal tech ecosystem embrace that layer and allow it to enable uh, even greater capability. And much of that will be done uh, through a universal blockchain-based identities for law. Not just identities for people or entities or companies, but uh, identities for matters and documents, etc. Blockchain technology um, actually is the watershed we've been waiting for, for 20 years. And it's because it solves this very, you know, it fits on one slide, one sentence there, but I'm gonna to explain to you what it means. Every single transaction with a blockchain is digitally signed. Um, every one of those transactions is then chained together with a digital hash, it's not another form of digital signature, and then it's replicated on hundreds of computers around the world with digital signatures. That creates a trust fabric that's so strong that even nation states can't break it. You can finally have a form of identity that you can cryptographically prove is really belongs to you as an individual, you as an organization, to a uh, smart contract, to a legal uh, matter. Yes, the, the cryptography behind all this is very powerful, but companies such as Evernim are in the business of making it as easy to use as, for instance, iMessage or uh, WhatsApp or Signal. All apps we now use on our, on our, on our, our smartphones all of them are using end-to-end -end digitally secure cryptography underneath. My name is David Fisher. I'm the CEO and founder of Integra, Integra Ledger. Uh, we started this project uh, nearly two years ago uh, as an initiative to uh, figure out better ways to connect law firms and their clients. Yeah, as, as a law, I'm not a lawyer. I'm a longtime client of big law firms. Uh, and one of my firms asked me to come in and, and give them some advice you know, on how to better service clients. Uh, and I got in there and what I saw really startled me. Uh, the you know, redundancy, I mean, email systems and document systems and 
calendaring systems and billing systems and a humongous amount of effort you know, expended to try to make those systems work together. As much as you can do amazing innovation in legal software, you still have to fit into the existing system. A document's a document, a lawsuit's a lawsuit, a contract is a contract. Those are unique identities and it's our belief that those identities should live in one place and we propose that that should be the Integra Ledger blockchain. We propose this as a global utility for the legal industry. I mean, it's, it's a simple idea. I mean, it's just one blockchain to anchor legal identities for the world. Obviously, we can't own that or control that. That's where the global legal blockchain comes in. The, it has to be governed by the participants in the market. And so that's law firms, clients, legal technology companies, universities, law schools. Ultimately, this, this is a group that on a global basis can oversee this system of blockchain-based unique identities. Ultimately, we think of this as blending the best of both worlds. So it's, it's the privacy you know, and control of our data in various data stores like exist now in companies and law firms. It's the efficiency of centralization as we think about it in you know, cloud-based services. Uh, but with that trust framework and legal identity on blockchain that allows this interoperability, trust, security, and efficiency that we think ultimately can transform the entire legal technology ecosystem. It just occurred to me, and David, I have not told you this story, but I met David here in Vegas three months ago. We were attending the Corporate Legal Operations Council's second annual meeting, which rocked. And he pulled up his chair to the booth, our, our Oric booth, and he started talking, like, I want to talk to you about blockchain, and I want to talk to you about making it, you know, life better for your clients. And, and I'm listening, and I, I want to be open and honest. I've never said this before. I was listening. I was very curious. I was like, clearly this guy is smart. He's very well informed, and he might be insane. I think we were three years ago at rock bottom in the relationship that existed between, and I don't mean Auric, I think we've been doing a good job um, with our clients, but the industry in general was at rock bottom. The marriage was broken, and I think Clock came along just in time to change the conversation and say we've got to do things differently. The reality of, of the law firm life is that we're asked to do more with less, and the impact on profitability is uh, profound and difficult, and it's a real challenge that we face. Uh, general counsels don't want law firms to go away. In fact, they want us to thrive. It's just we have to change which piece of the, we just have to do the right piece of the work. Today feels um, to me a lot like I felt when I first got the call from Connie and some of her colleagues and co-founders of Clock. And, you know, they said, we want to talk. We can do better. And, the, and the, it feels very synonymous or similar to me, the feeling, because Connie and her colleagues set this tone that said, come talk with us. We're on the same side of the table. And actually, I had a very similar reaction when I came to learn that David and his rather impressive executive team that I've come to get to know a bit, they're actually not insane, and they're very intelligent and experienced people. But I felt very much the same way, that we're all in this together. And interestingly, somebody asked me about, um, well, how do you feel about being sitting alongside Baker Hosteller, for example? Excellent firm. We compete with them in the market. You know, why, why would you link arms with them? Because we can't afford not to. We are the co-creators and co-leaders together of Watson Legal applying AI rationally to the legal domain, to the business of law. What if we could determine new units of work or articulate those units of work differently and express them in the Integra Ledger blockchain? It's a good example of a business of law use case that we see a high demand for. And certainly, while we've built the cognitive application, we believe that it can be ever so much more powerful.
It's so great at MIT for people that are at all techy or interested in technology and tinkering and hacking with things. So many curious minds. I just found it's utopia for me and I've just never, I've always had a foot there at least since 97. We are announcing right here, right now, um, the commencement of a legal program. Um, it, you can find the registration for our debutante kind of party, our coming out party with Integra and with the IBM Watson team focused on law um, as sponsors is going to be a two-day event on October 30th and 31st. We're doing some hangouts with some of the speakers and um, talk, previewing some of the topics and also gathering and garnering t topics and questions and um, issues and topics and ideas and possibilities that people have that, that you would nominate for us to discuss. We're, we're bringing together academic and research communities um, that are transforming legal services and the law itself in some cases through um, technology. The way I'm going to be helping is mostly by doing the thing I like most, which is hacking the law. Um, and so the way that um, we do that, there's a group, believe it or not, called Legal Hackers. Uh, I like these little prototype jams. I learned how to do it at MIT, how to wrap it prototype from a legal and policy um, context and to utilize those rules as requirements and also to use the wisdom of the law, not just as constraints that limit creativity, but also, of, um, but also as a way to derive the wisdom of what we should do and how. So thank you for coming. I hope you found this uh, intriguing enough to, to get engaged and get involved and uh, we'll be around to answer any questions you have. Thank you.